welcome, welcome, welcome. Are you guys excited?
it is kind of approaching. I mean, okay. I'll stop approaching 50. <laughs> She's like, you better slow down. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> don't do that to me. I don't like that one. But how do you feel about the show now versus when it first aired in 2005? There's the years for you. I mean, it's, it's only got better, right? Like, come on. Like, I, I, I think that, like, growing up with the show and just having seen it multiple times now, you, you, you learn something new every time you watch it. Um, so I think that, you know, it just keeps getting better. You keep learning more lessons, seeing more things, and understanding things that you didn't. Um, yeah, don't it? <laughs> you just think, uh, you know, it's great. I think it's a phenomenal kind of show. It's one of those things that it's never kind of happened. Like we didn't have Netflix before, before yeah, so yeah. a yeah. show that we did like 15 years never came back on like a new platform, which became TV for all of us worldwide and became the number one show on TV during like, a worldwide pandemic. During a worldwide pandemic, like, none of this stuff has ever happened. We're like, this is crazy, but that just kind of reinvoked the audience that grew up with it and then it found a brand new audience of younger people and older people and it was just this poignant tale that happened to like really speak to the things going on in the world today it's, yeah. it's, it's phenomenal so it did like you said it got it got better as it aged like fine wine yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Mason. I whispered it but it's okay. <laughs> well I feel like there's a, a happy little transition that happened with a lot of people that I meet where they watched it when they were younger or when they were in high school, and then there was like a little break, and then for some reason they came back to it, probably when it went on Netflix, like, oh yeah, I used to love the show. And then you realize that you still love the show, and that it's not just a kid show, and I feel like that's what like locked it in. You're like, wait, this is still really good, and it's been like 12 years. What's happening? I have to show this to my nieces yeah. and nephews. I have to show this to my children. And now here we are. And you so, get it on a whole different level now. You know, like you, you watch it now and go, oh, wow, that went right over my head when I was nine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. I don't think we knew it was this cool when it first came out. No. Like, oh, no. We're so much cooler now. Yeah. 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 Oh, back row, you're not going to hide from me. Yeah, I didn't hear the question, but I was waiting to check. I was like waiting to call in for tickets for my favorite band, and I was missing when the radio station was calling for it, but luckily the Easy Mac cooked so quickly in the microwave that I was able to get the tickets and finish my Easy Mac as well. It was a good time. Know what a phenomenon it would be. Like we just had no idea, and honestly, still, I, other voice actors go, "Wait, you do these conventions every weekend?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm like, "I want to do those." And I was like, "Yeah." I was like, "It's just that we're on this certain show, and it just has this magic to it. And there's really only like you know, 15 of us whatever that can really do it as much as we can." I mean, I don't know if there's yeah. another show that's like had such yeah, a big impact. I don't know. It is genuinely incredible to come to these cons and just like talk to people who have been connecting with the show for almost 20 years now. Um, and, and see uh, generational, like families, who yeah. somebody introduced somebody else across generations, and, and it means so much to people, and it uh, means so much to us to have been a part of it, so it's beautiful to get to connect in these places. And is there a mac and cheese con? <laughs> <laughs> My rate at those is really high. So. Sharing easy mac with a fascinating stranger. <laughs>
Okay. Are you ready for the next question? I'm going to give you a warning. It's tough. It's the hardest question I'm going to get today. And everybody has to answer. Mandatory. Are you ready? Okay. The animals of Avatar are some of the Turtle duck. I think you answered it. Um, they are some of the most beloved characters. If you could have a pet from the show... Counterpoint, Sabertooth Moose Lion Cub? <laughs> there we go. Which one would you choose to be your pet? Only one. Pet Lion Turtle. My house is big enough. I mean, it's Appa, right? Yes, it's Appa, obviously. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the I sweetest, love Appa. I love Appa. most sensitive, yeah. kindest little cutie, and you can pet him and jump on him, ride, ride around in the yeah. sky. Yeah. Give me a break. He literally Fun. carries the show on his back. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally. <laughs> you need him. Momo's cool. Special shout out to Momo. Yeah. Yeah. Also, shout out to D. Bradley Baker. Oh. Yeah. Yeah.
That's rough, buddy. <laughs> Why am I so bad at being good? <laughs> God, it's hard to say. I like to do the entire opening monologue. Yeah. 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 Also, I'll just, I do like to say, my grandmother used to tell me stories. I like that part, and I also like, of course, that I believe Aang can save the world. <laughs> from Cora, uh, but this is the line that got me through COVID, a line that personally helped me. Uh, if you look for the light, you will often find it. If you look for the dark, that is all you will ever see. Similarly, the line that kind of helped me get through COVID in a similar way is, um, drink cactus juice. No <laughs> quenchier, nothing's quenchier. It's the quenchiest. That can be, a cactus juice can be a comfort in dark times. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I was going to say, May, that your voice is very soothing. Like, anytime I hear the intro, yes. sometimes I do just play the intro, and I'm just like, God, this is just so nice to listen to. I mean, you're annoying. I'm going to call you and start leaving you messages. <laughs> one of Toph's like first blind jokes when they're when they're in the episode of the library. I think my favorite episode is that but that and Tales of Bossing Say. Torn between which one is my favorite. But she's like, look, there it is. That's what it'll sound like when one of you spots it. <laughs> My first girlfriend okay. turned into the moon. That's rough, buddy. Oh, oh. Oh. Well, my favorite main line is the, you miscalculated. I love Zuko more than I fear you. Oh. I want to use that one day. I don't know how, but I'm going to use that someday. It's a great breakup line. <laughs> As long as you love Zuko. <laughs> that's Leaving right. someone for Zuko. <laughs> Ty Lee, Ty Lee. I did, I said, that's rough, buddy. That's my family. That's what about Ty Lee? Line? Oh, Ty Lee? Oh, yeah. I, I just, circus freak is a compliment. Woo! <laughs> it's different. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me? Okay, yeah, it's you. You would think it would be the traditional one, but mine is, you never told me you made out with a moon spirit. <laughs> That is rough, buddy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so now we'll take some audience questions. Hi. 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 Hello. Hi. So my name's Randy. I just now got nervous, so I was trying to set the girl. There are so many amazing episodes from this series, and a few that I will live in my brain forever. Uh, the Puppet Master terrified me as a kid. And it was one of those that I would watch up until the end because the whole bloodbending scene just yes. freaked me out. Are there any episodes throughout um, the series that have resonated with you in a positive or just like an emotional way? I have to say that is all, that one also really freaked me out. I think like being, it was just so dark, and I think it was dark in a way that was like really interesting because the idea of having the power of manipulation and control and um, forcing someone else to kind of bend to your will in this way, I think like those themes are really heavy and intense. And obviously, I was just scared because that lady was scary and the whole thing was scary. <laughs> but um, I think it was really like it was a meaningful like lesson even for me at the time of like understanding you know, the darkness of trying to control other people through manipulation and stuff like that. So I think that one, for sure, is like my favorite episode. Here you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Just go. The Storm. Actually, the Storm. I love the Storm. I was watching the Storm again. I loved the Zuko and how they kind of did Zuko and Aang. Like, they just balanced the episode and it just kind of like taught me that Especially at that time in the story, you think that the villain, you know, he's the villain, and that's the hero. But then you realize, you're like watching, you're like, oh, the so-called villains in our life and the heroes are not that different. Like, they're actually mirroring. It's like, they're, there's, you know, it's a very strange thing. So it kind of gives you, gave me like, wow, I have to really think about who I 
think are the villains in my life are and who are the heroes because me. You can go out there. <laughs> Except for Zula. It's <laughs> very clear. Said? It's very clear. I always, uh, I always liked the Guru episodes and that the way the direction the series kind of took there. Um, I think there are a lot of things that the series covers that aren't typically touched upon in what's meant to be a kid show. But I think just like introducing kids and myself at the time to like the concepts of spirituality and all of those things, that was very cool, and it's 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 something to to remember. I just uh, the the one about the where the hot guys in the trees and then Kachara. <laughs> But in this particular scene, I thought the scene where Zuko goes into the tent and, and yeah. Iroh says, I was never angry with you. I was sad because I thought you had lost your way. That is another example of the lessons this show is teaching. I mean, this show was dealing with genocide from the very first episode. The leaves from the vine sequence, which resonates with people, it's not really even about death. It's about grief, which is a much more complicated process. And I think that's in many ways the power of the show today and why we're still talking about it all these years later. I also had a favorite scene where Zuko goes into a tent, but... <laughs> Since the show was uh, recorded during a time when you all still got to be in the room together, uh, did any of you get a chance to record with Mark Hamill, and what was that like? Yes. Yeah. We did. We recorded with him, right? The yeah. three of us. Uh, oftentimes it was me and Jack and Dante in the room, um, which was really funny. <laughs> Very productive. Uh, yeah, wild, wild times. Um, but I remember that we worked with Mark Hamill, and I remember my favorite thing that he said was, like, at one point he was, like, doing something, and then he stopped himself, and he was like, God, I'm like a parody of myself. <laughs> so funny, and I have like, never forgotten it. Before. So yes. Well, on the days that Mark was there, oh sorry, I, I, I mean, <laughs> Mark, I, I'm, it's so funny, I never really watched Star Wars, and so I've been working with Mark since I was like, you know, 20, 20 years old, and that to me, he's always just, he's Mark, you know? But I mean, after I watched Star Wars, I was like, oh yeah, he's like an icon. Anyway, but it was funny, because every time he was at the studio, there was like all these board artists, and like all these people in the, the thing, and I'm like, going on? Like, why are all these people in here? And then I was like, oh, Mark's recording today. So everybody's found a reason to sort of meander their way into the phone calls. And like, oh, I gotta look over these boards to make sure that... Anyway, it was always very funny, but my son met him when he was little, and then he, he hadn't watched Star Wars either, and so he was like, is that guy's name Mark? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, is he, like, famous or something? He seems, like, really familiar. I was like, yeah, he's pretty, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> something like that. Thank you. And we'll try to like rapid fire since yeah. there's such a lot. Yeah, we so. gotta go. Let's see if I can get through this. Um, 
This is specifically for, for Greg. Um, I think the character of Iro probably means a lot to a lot of people in this room. Um, and, and a lot of that is obviously Mako, who's, or Mako is not here with us, but a lot of that, I think, people overlook you a lot. And that scene in particular, like you mentioned, is like my favorite scene as well. Was there a, did you have a lot of in, um, nervousness taking on that role after what not? Did you know what, how iconic it was? Absolutely. I mean, I, I discovered, I mean, the way I ended up with a gig, and if you've heard the story, you know, you're going to have to hear it again. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, it's such a, uh, Iro says, you know, uh, destiny is a funny thing. I am sitting here today because of a birthday present that I got on my 17th birthday. Uh, I was upon a very big Stephen Sondheim fan. I was a young actor. Wanted, my parents would give me musical albums for my birthday. In 1977, I got an album called Pacific Overtures, which starred an actor named Mako Awamatsu. And man, I loved I loved this musical so much I could sing the entire score for you now. In fact, I will. So sit yeah. back. Nippon, the floating kingdom. But uh, I digress. Anyway, what I didn't know by singing along with this musical again and again and again was that I was actually working on an impression of Mako Uematsu, which would come in handy in 2006. So literally, it, it ended up being I now have it framed. And the cool thing is, I was the in 1981, I was a room service waiter in Houston, Texas. They were doing a production of Sweeney Todd across the street. Hal Prince and Stephen Sondheim were staying in the hotel. So not only is this the album that ultimately got me this gig, it is indeed signed by Stephen Sondheim and Hal Prince. So yeah, I was well aware of, of his work long before I was cast as Iro. So yeah, I was terrified and still am, frankly. <laughs> Hi, I'm Koo. Nice to meet you guys. Hi, Hi. And Dante, you guys, the best uncle and nephew relations, because I have the same with my uncle. Aww. Um, but I want to thank you guys, this is not even a question, to raising a literal generation of amazing folks, amazing So thank you guys very much for making us who we are because of all you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. watched it like what did they think about when they watched the show and hear your voices like what how does it affect the kids in your life mm. am i the only one who has a kid yeah. <laughs> i have a i have a three-year-old that's right uh, uh she, the trailer for a different show i'm on dragon prince <laughs> uh, auto played one time where we were pulling up something for her on netflix and it starts with my voice and she no. freaked out <laughs> she was like what's happening <laughs> like does that sound nice? Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's the full extent of any of my stuff that she's consumed. I'll let you know. Nice. She I'll let you know. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have two stepkids, and 15 and 17, and so the 17 year old is nothing in common with me, nor wants to do anything with me, but, uh, but, his, uh, but his friends at school, uh, they were like, what, dude? Your mom? No way. And so, like, I pick them up, and I'm like, hi. All like cheesy, you know, uh, <laughs> psycho mom, and they're like, "Is that hurt?" And I'm like, and they're and I'm like, "Yeah." So he'll come home and be like, "Can you sign this for them?" <laughs> I mean, at least we can have some kind of cool cred. Like, I'll take it. So, but they love it. They've seen it through and through, and they. Love it. Okay. And my my son was I was pregnant. He's 16 now, but I was pregnant with him when I was Azula. So he, I would feel him jump when I was like yelling and stuff like inside. He was like, "Oh, good." He was scared. He was scared. But he's never seen the show, but he's, 
you know, he said at high school he was getting bullied a little bit because they were like, your mom's, you know, like, you know, and, and he was like, oh, you were like some mean, like, character, I don't know, and then I was like, oh, yeah, it was a version of Azula, and yeah, but now his brother, so we haven't gotten to the Azula part for the eight-year-old yet, so he, he still thinks that, and he's about, I'm about to pull some rank around here. <laughs> Bedtime, I said, peasants. <laughs> I think, I think it was last Christmas, I was talking to my son, who's now 28, I think, and I said, I said, you know, Cooper, uh, uh, you know, I, I rose a very famous father figure, I'm your father, how do, how do I rank, you know? And my son says to me, yeah, I give you a solid six and a half. <laughs> it's... I Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. He's a little five member. <laughs> Hey there guys, my name's Aaron, big fan, love you all for what you do. Uh, I've heard rumors that they're making a live action remake of Avatar The Last Airbender. Yeah. I don't know if this is true or not, but I don't think this remake would be complete if all of you cameoed as yourselves as the Ember <laughs> Island players. <laughs> Start a petition, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, getting on that right now. Nice. Nice. That's funny. Hi. Hello. Hi. Uh, I don't know how to say your name, but May, yeah. my, yeah. how do you say your yeah. name? May. Just May? Just okay, so I said it right first time. Um, <laughs> I was wondering, because you said the opening is your favorite line. I was wondering if you could do the full opening for us. This is the funniest thing of all time when I try to do this because I always enter into it being like, I know, of course I know this. And then I like pull a Dante, which is like, Dante used to do this thing when we were recording where like he would get so worked up that he would start to like not be able to get any, he'd be like, and I could, where, 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 what's going, where am I? Characters that you guys played, what would you do with them? Gymnastics. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I would have tea. Go on. Yeah, that's what I was, I'm gonna go out on a live here and say have tea. Yeah. We got tea together. We can, that, we can do that. Or maybe tea. Kila. <laughs> you said the characters that we voice. Like if I hung out with Toph. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Um, I feel like we should go to therapy. <laughs> And then, uh, and then, you know, me 
maybe maybe try to go make some friends and realize that you do actually need friends. Smart. You can't do it all alone. Aww. I'd go swimming with Katara. I think that'd be so chic. We'd be yeah. tossing each other. <laughs> <laughs> I would disappear for another hundred years. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I could fly, that's pretty awesome. But also penguin sledding. Let's go with that. Yeah. Yeah. I'd play volleyball. Oh. With the skulls of our enemies. <laughs> yeah, if I could hang out with my favorite character I'd ever played, I guess we would have some easy men. <laughs> I feel like we would do karaoke and sing love songs about Mako forever. <laughs> I would ride the Unagi with Suki. <laughs> no, but really, we could just lie on the beach and check out boys. <laughs> Thank you. I don't think anybody ever expected this to happen in a while, so thank you. Uh, my name's Alina, and I guess my question is, is like, so it kind of touches up on like the last episode and the first episode of Korra, right? Like, what happened to Zuko's mom? So I know they wrote something about it, but before you knew any of that, what were your guys' interpretations of what would have happened to Zuko's mom? I had no idea. I, I really wanted to know also. I liked what they wrote in the search. <coughs> Very cool. But, yeah, it's... I always thought, like, uh, you know, it's like a, along these other really adult themes that they do right. in the show, one of the themes is uh, abuse, parental abuse, neglect, mm -hmm. and you're like, this is really intense, and you get to see not just with Zuko, but with Azula, two mm -hmm. things that can happen with parental abuse, like okay. there's, the kids go in different directions, and so I did not know what, what where the mother was, and when I, when I read it in the, the, the comics, it was, I really did love it, and, and she got to tell her story of what happened. Mm -hmm. Which is still kind of messed up. Yeah. Still kind of like, I'm like, that's still messed up. You still abandoned your children. <laughs> and I get that you guys are going to have a life. But still, one of your daughters is in trouble. Not pregnant, but you know. Not pregnant. That kind of trouble. So I, I didn't really know. I'm, this is the kind of story that I try not to set and guess what, what they're going to do. I kind of like wait to see mm -hmm. where their minds take it. In the search, did you think she, what did she do in search? I don't know, did she leave because yeah, it was abuse? You have to read it, you have to read it. Oh. <laughs> Can't tell you, Azula, you have to find out your mom's story yourself. <laughs> That would be a solid podcast episode. Yeah. 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 And you should be it on Mother's Day. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hi. 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 I'm so glad that you guys are together. My name is Gray, number two. Oh. Oh. With an E or an A? E-I. 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 I love it. Sorry about it. So I currently have eight Avatar tattoos, oh, and yes. I was wondering what you guys would get tattooed like related to Avatar if you could. Oh. You wow. And actually, oh, go ahead. I get the blue spirit mask. Where? Right on your the face. The scar right on my face. <laughs> <laughs> blue, blue spirit okay, mask. Okay, I have to. You got it. Oh, Who's that on your back? That's who? Uh, why? <laughs> but why, Gray? But why? You were never even a player. It's art. But beautiful art. Beautiful art. Right? It's been around before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've met you guys in Anderson. I have a name for you. I feel like I would get an animal. I mean, my name is Cricket. Turtle Duck. Right. But yeah, I think I get a turtle duck. Yeah. I've been influenced by this one because he's been talking about this tattoo. We're doing it next happening. week in Atlanta. Next week. <laughs> A little artsy, so I would probably do like a minimal kind of outline of like a badger mole spine with like a little like cute dotty, I don't know, something cute like that you don't really know it's a badger mole, but if you know, you know, you know? Yeah, yeah that's probably what I did. I'd get the entirety of Sokka's really horrible drawing of I've seen those yin yang fish, I don't know what they're called. I but yeah, they're nice. Really Scream yeah, yeah, yeah. Too sad for me, couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm getting the full neck tat of Katara. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe like two bucks on the air for me. That's just me though. Yeah, that's, 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 the, that's the cop out answer. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Azula's going to get the teardrop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Oscar. Hi, Oscar. Uh, I have a question. If you could cast someone in your role, who would you cast to play with, regardless of gender? Live action That's or voice? Question. Voice. Okay. Voice. I cast Dante yeah. <laughs> in my role. I'm grabbing it before any of you guys <laughs> Sorry. We made the highest song. Yeah. I don't know. That's a good question, but we guess yeah. I don't know. Uh, who sounds cool? You sound cool. Oh, thank you. Nick Cage. Nick Cage. Oh, Nick Cage is Zuko would be. That'd be good. Interesting. I love that. Interesting. Interesting. Christopher Walken. I was Uncle just going to say that. <laughs> Christopher Walken, what? I don't know. Jack? I like, don't know. You're too smart for us. We're not that smart. <laughs> I like having, I don't know, like Katara had such like a clear tone, and I mean, I was 12, so I had kind of a clear tone too, but I feel like it'd be cool to hear Toph with some texture, like 12 year old texture, so maybe like a, I'm gonna say this on like a Florence Pugh, something that has like a little bit of roughness, so it could be like a dynamic to Katara's. Like Aquafina or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. There now I'm now becoming a casting director. Now, I'm a casting director. now we're in the room. Now you're in the room. I feel like Jack Ortega could clearly play many. Oh. But there's so many other people too. William Shatner. <laughs> Prince Zuko, it's good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's actually crazy. I can't believe I'm sitting or standing here. <laughs> That's how nervous I am. Love you guys so much. I've had. Anyway, to my question. Um, uh, it was hit on a hit like a lot uh, of how there's like a lot of adult themes and a lot of like darker things that uh, are often not in like children's programming. And I was wondering for for you guys, especially like when you were like voice acting and like getting into character. Uh, when were you like, was there a moment or was there a line where you got so in the headspace of your character where you're just like, whoa, mm -hmm. I, I need to suck in? No. <laughs> well, clearly Dante, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? It's true. <laughs> no, I got into it for it's sure. You know, I don't know. I think we just, when you're acting, you just kind of in it and I don't want you to think beyond it, but we're just kind of. Yeah, I think every day. Oh, maybe I'm confused. Yeah. No, I think you mean like, like, where you personally were like, whoa. Yeah. No, there were, I do Extra. remember specifically when we'd read the scripts, there, after we, it started getting, it's like, book two, we'd come in, like, me, me, Jack, and we're like, did you read the script this week? Like, what's going on? This is crazy. Yeah. Is this what's actually happening? We were started, that was supposed to, like, that started, like, happening around book two. Book one, I don't think, I was like, a, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> but you gotta understand, book one, me and May were doing Jake Long the American Dragon Same. on Tuesday, and then on Thursday we would be doing Avatar. Literally. So we were like, it's, we, were like we were like weird. We were like, is it am I a Hunts girl? Yeah. And who's the penguin side? What's the what's happening here? Yeah, the rapping. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we were a little bit. We were a little bit so much crazy. crazy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. 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 I'm so nervous. Um, no. Avatar is a show about a many lessons, so what would you want people to take after watching the show based on your experiences with it? Uh, similar to my, my you know, kind of joking comment about going to therapy, but, but actually, um, that, that you can't do it all alone. I think the hyper-independence, which I have experienced a lot of, uh, is actually quite isolating. So I think that it's scary, but to trust people and when they let you down, you just keep moving forward and hope that your trust will eventually find the right people, which is easier said than done. But I think a helpful lesson, especially for trust. Right. And there's something with like the flexibility, like I like the, the idea of like, being able to be super present in the moment and so that you're flexible, you know, the like concept of like a tree, like it's gotta be able to bend or it'll break. And I think like, you know, we were thrown so many curveballs in this journey, but I think the concept of perseverance and the fact that we had each other and like, you know, like it's, it's, it really, it was such a team effort and the fact that they sort of grew together and they were able to be there for each other, that's the only thing that got them through. So like you could plan it all day and yet so much, was thrown at them that they didn't expect that, you know, they were able to sort of 
be with themselves enough to know what to do when it didn't go down as expected. Yeah, I was thinking, um, you know, May couldn't express herself, didn't feel she could express herself, definitely didn't meet parents' um, you know, expectations. So I think vulnerability, even though that's certainly not what she shows, um, I think that would that'd be what I learned, which is that it's okay right, to lean on people, but it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to express yourself, and it doesn't make you weak. I think Zuko's story says that we're all worthy of being redeemed for something. Yeah. Amen. And also, if you struggle with mental illness and you have medication available to you, don't feel bad about taking it. As a story of a soul. Somebody, somebody could have, I, she could have, I, I, I hear others, you know, a lot of mental illness in my family, and there would be people who do terrible things, and people would say, like, they're sick, they, you know, they're, because a lot of times you don't, they don't like the medication they're taking because it has these weird side effects, or they're gaining weight, or they're, and I get that, you know, and so they would just decide to not take it, and like, it was, it would rock the entire family. So, um, yeah, if you, if, if you have floaties available to you via medication, <laughs> don't go in the pool without your floaties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, th I think if you could, I thought about this, if you could distill, Iroism, for lack of a better word, down to just a few bullet points. You know, what his basic philosophy is, and it has helped me, is first of all, savor the little things in life. A, a cup of tea, you know, a beautiful day. Secondly, everyone can become a better version of themselves. It doesn't matter who you are or what you've come from, you can be better. And most important, and it's a lesson for our times, be kind, be kind. I'm assuming we'll be back at our table around yeah. four ish. Yeah, I'm guesstimating, just as a heads up for timing wise. But before people go, can we all take a picture with them in the background? Sure. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. Thank you.